Rebecca Faber, and I am a grad student at Michigan State. And this is my second time speaking in front of a lot of people, so just bear with me. So uh, we have a problem. And what is that problem? Uh, farmers have a very short window to plant their crops in the spring. And it is really risky to plant anything earlier than that. So some of the ways people have been solving these problems is using greenhouses, high tunnels, um, those can have a lot of uh, a lot of costs involved in those, and so we need to find a solution that included um, frost protection that wasn't super expensive. So just this is just a graph of showing you that there's only 120 degree uh, growing days in it'd be Benton Harbor, Michigan, and. So the solution we came up with, with is low tunnels. So what is a low tunnel? A low tunnel is a structure uh, that's put over the, the, the crop row. Um, it's got a bent piece of wire around it. And then there's a piece of plastic that's put over top of it. So why, why should we use low tunnels? Low tunnels lengthen the, the you can lengthen the growing season, uh, it protects your crops from wind and from the cool temperatures. Uh, there's lower upfront costs, and I'll go into that um, as we go through. Uh, it complements the field production system, so you're not uh, getting a greenhouse, you're not using a high tunnel, you, it just complements what you're already doing in the field. It allows you to plant and harvest crops sooner, and then it also uh, is, it, it lets you get the higher market prices at the beginning of the season. So here's a picture of my study. We did five different combinations, well, four different combinations of plastic, and then we had an open treatment. Here's an example of what the cross section of each tunnel would look like. Um, we had the dual layer system, which had a row cover plus plastic, then we had just the plastic, and then we had the uh, open treatment. Each of those had different sensors in them that to tell me the air temperature and soil temperature. Um, we used two different color plastics. We used clear and white. The two field crops we used were mountain spring tomatoes, which is a determinate variety, and then speedway cucumbers, which is a slicing cucumber. So here's our planting dates. We're planting the end of April. So. Um, on a, in, in a normal year, you would plant the end of May if you were doing uh, a normal planting. So some logistics. Uh, as you would think, the clear plastic provides the best transmission compared to the white. So we had two frost events in 2011. <coughs> And as you can see, the, the two highest bars in there, the, I believe it's purple, and then the, the blue there, uh, had the best frost protection, which was the dual layer system. And it provided between three and seven degrees of frost protection. That dual system also provided double of the amount of degree growing days compared to the normal uh, planting with, without a cover on it. So here's an example of what the no treatment uh, or no cover treatment looked like. It was it had wind burn, it had um, frost damage on it. Here's an example of what it looked on, like under a clear single layer treatment. A lot more mature, a lot, lot bigger. So here's your side by side comparison of what the clear, clear dual layer system and the no cover early planting date looked like. Um, you can see that there's a big difference. You get some of the plants in the front that were frost, frost damaged, and then the plants in the back are the ones that were covered. Here's the cucumber comparison with the no cover and then the clear single layer system. All right, so in summary of the planting and harvest dates, we planted everything, as I said, early April. We harvested July 19th and July 20th, or July 12th for the, for the tomatoes. 
Um, and then for the no cover treatments, which were planted uh, the end of May, we harvest those April or August 1st and July 23rd, which was the third harvest date for those low tunnel treatments. Here is a graph of the tomato yield. You can see that the uh, clear uh, tunnels had the most yield. The orange, the one on the very bottom, was that the low, the no cover treatment, which started about two weeks later than the cover treatments, and as I said, had the lower yield there. Here's the data for 2012. Um, once again, we had two, two weeks earlier harvest, but then at the end of the season, we did have um, the normal actually catch up and yield. Cucumbers. For the cucumbers, we planted in April, the end of April, they had the first harvest date for those were June 27th and the 25th, both of those in 2011 and 2012. Um, the no cover treatments were planted, as I said, the end of May. The first harvest date for those were July 14th and 9th. So once again, two, two weeks difference in harvesting. And the difference that, that, that was, so the, the low tunnel treatments had, were harvested six times or five times before the actual no covered plant planting, which was in May. Here's the year yield data for that. Um, once again, the dual air system showed had the most yield. So I talked a little bit about how there's higher market prices at the beginning of the season because everybody else in the middle of the season is harvesting so the price goes down. There's a $5 drop July 11th when um, everybody started harvesting their cucumbers. So our ideal harvesting time would be on this end where the, where the price is $5 higher. Tomatoes, they're not quite as a big drum, jump, but where that red line is, we weren't receiving any Michigan tomatoes before that. All our tomatoes were coming from California, Mexico, um, so our goal was to bring in tomatoes before um, we had to import those during that time. So the costs. So the cost per acre, um, we, this was a partial an analysis. So we just started the, the no cover treatments at zero. And then we had um, the different costs. So we had the uh, <coughs> labor costs, which would be installing and uninstalling, and then we had the plastic and the, and the wire, and then the row cover. And as you can see, per acre, it ranged between five, $549 to $694, depending on what plastic. C stands for clear, and then W stands for white. So the white plastic does cost more, but I, I'll tell you that the clear is the best, the most beneficial. So. So some assumptions we made on our costs. Uh, we, we had a low tunnel layer. That low tunnel layer is $3,500. $3, if you were to assume that you're gonna use that for five years on 100 acres, it's approximately $7 per acre. You don't have to have a low tunnel layer to lay this plastic. You can lay it by hand. So that would eliminate that cost. Um, the wires we used over a five year period and then, once again, I just want to say that all the input, input costs are not included in this. It's just whatever the low tunnels would be extra. So here's the net revenue per <coughs> acre. And you can see the two bars on the far right and the far left of each crop are the open treatments. And everything in the middle is the low tunnels. So as long as you are above the open treatments, which you are, um, you made a profit. So in summary, uh, the best frost protection in the most growing degree days would be the clear dual layer treatment. That's the one that had the clear plastic and the row cover in it. The best yield 
and revenue for the cucumbers was the clear dual layer treatment for 2011. Um, and then the best yield re revenue for the tomatoes was the clear single layer treatment. But based on the, the um, growing degree days and the frost protection, I would still go with the dual layer system. I have a lot of acknowledgments, specifically SARE for funding part of my grad student project. And then also I had a farmer, Piggott Pigot and Girls Farm um, is, is the farmer that actually helps and this is his system. And I also want to thank all my professors, Matthew, Ron, and Jeff for all their help and input. And I'm sure you have lots and lots of questions so this would be the time to ask them. Just because I just flew through that. <laughs> so. Um, what are you concerned with uh, having the system shut off like that? Is that errors in moving through it? So was that a challenge for you? Like, did you encourage like, all that or you know, now you'll do to occur? We did have Can some disease. Yeah. He was asking if there's any disease issues with the, the lack of air going through it. Um, there is a potential, but there also, there's, there's, it's perforated. So there is some air movement but there is a possibility of some type of um, disease. So, yes? When you lay your plastic and your row cover, which do you put on first, the perforated plastic? The row cover goes on, well, the machine that I was using lays it simultaneously. Um, which is they have so the the roll cover is on, it's the material portion is underneath the plastic, and what was right, right. So so you've got your if you can see in the picture you've got this is the the metal or the metal wire there, and then the plastic and the roll cover are going over top of the hoops. Yeah. The question was asked about drip tape, and yes, there is drip tape underneath the plastic. There, there is not any, so there was a question about heat, and there is no extra heat. It's all solar. No, but it overheats. There, there is a potential for that, but we didn't have any issues with that. We still had an, an earlier harvest, and as you can see, the yields were still at the same level as everything else. So. I would, I would, the question was about cucumber production and later in the season, and yes, the farmer does do that with that. The only thing, if, let's say if you were going to do tomatoes, it would be difficult just because there's such a long season crop. Yeah. When did you take the covers off? A month later. The covers, the, so she asked what, when were the covers removed? They were removed at the same time the normal planting date would have been, so the end of May. So the question was about highs and lows of temperature. What I guess my question, what what do you mean? Like was it average temperature 85 degrees uh, as a high when you took them off? Therefore, you felt that it was necessary to remove the, the, the plastic, or was the temperature lower than that? At what, what point did you decide that you needed to take the plastic off so that it wouldn't damage the plants? Okay. So the question is of when to remove the plastic. And the reason, and so we removed the plastic because of, first off, the plant got at the top of the thing and it was coming out anyway. Um, the other thing is, at the end of May for us, there's no danger of frost. So pretty much you want to take them off at when there is no more danger of frost. Yeah. If you don't have drip tape in this, let's say for a garden that's say like 40 feet long in the hoop system, there's condensation from the covering and now to water it if you have if you have plastic over it or if you can pull it out and water. The question is about uh, watering without drip, drip irrigation and I, I don't know the answer to that. Do you guys remove the covers during the day then or do you keep them on all the time? So like on a warm day when it's like fifty degrees if you remove the plastic so they can get more sun? 
so the question is about removing the, the tunnels. They're not removable. Oh, once, once, they're, it's once it's there, it's there. Um, to, to make sure that the plant got acclimated, we did cut them open at the top so that there was a, a little bit of an acclimation period. So, yeah. so you can't reuse the plastic? You can't reuse the plastic. It's pretty much the same as using like plastic mulch. The weight of your road cover, and when we use road cover, we're pinned down the side staples. We don't actually, you had the edges buried, didn't you? Yep. We had so much wind that every time we try to use the low tunnels, we've got stuff to run all over the place. So, what was the first question? <laughs> <laughs> the weights of the road cover, because we have different weights on the farm. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the weight of the road cover was. Um, I believe all I know is that the, the I know the trans transmission was 70, but it's something that's in, imported from Italy, so I, I I don't know the answer to that. Is the only reason to not use reuse the plastic a matter of the use of machinery or? Well, so the question is why we don't reuse the plastic. You, so the reason why we didn't reuse the plastic is because the farmer that was helping us with it, they would just cut it and recycle it, basically. Uh, I think you probably could unearth it, but you would have to find a way to rewind it up and then put it back on. It's a machine right. thing then. Okay. Right. So by hand, it would be a different. Right, so if if it so by hand, if if you were putting it down, you could take it back up, roll it back up, and then use it the next time. Yes. So so ball in a china shop on that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess it, it depends on how you want to do it. If you're using it by machine, it, it's it's not yeah, beneficial. Yeah, depending on your scale, maybe maybe some of us are on a scale where a machine is. Okay. I. It's a liability, not now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you're saying that the plastic roll that you got was. Uh, they buy it from Italy? So there's so the row cover material, which was the um, it actually feels like a like a cheap cloth or you know it's a material that's from Italy, but I know that it, it's something that you could get here too. It's like a woven or spun. It will, yep, with, spun bound with a permeation for water and air. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's the box. That's the underside. Yes. So that's so the dual layer system. There's the there's the row cover, and then right on top of that is the plastic. The plastic is from here. Okay, so so the row cover is breathable. And <coughs> both both of them are. So the question was about breathability, and yes, the row cover is a material that's spun bound, and then over top of it is the plastic, and that's perforated. So, so I understand correctly that the it is on hoops. Yes. There is, there is. They're right on each. So the question is, is the plastic and the roll cover right on top of each? Yes, they're layered together. Although maybe variable depending on the, the wind and the heat and the cooling, because I imagine that, that they would heat unevenly uh, and stick together and um, maybe separate a little bit. I mean, there's a, a potential for a variable uh, air space or lack of it in there? I mean, it doesn't stay constant side by side, or does it? it I'm not, so the question was asked about the difference in between the two different, the plastic and the roll cover. And it's, it's just draped underneath it. I didn't do any measuring or anything okay. to it. So. so if we did two hoops and used the same amount of uh, cover material, we could potentially increase our our um, uh, ability to hold the, the heat. But she said the plastic is perforated also. Right? Yes, the plastic is perforated. Uh -huh. Can you tell us um, how long the wires are and how far apart they are? The, the wires, I believe, are two to three. It was every other plant. That's that. I'll just go with that. It was every other plant. And we had 20-inch spacing on these. 
Um, I don't remember what the length of the, the wires are, but it is in my report. So. How wide are the beds? They're five foot, the, so the beds are five foot centered. Five foot center and then that. And then they range, be, I, I think that's about two and a half feet. So that's the trough, mm -hmm. is it five feet? Yeah, from, from center of one bed to the other is five foot. Okay. Yes, in the back. Did you remove both row covers at the same time? Did the, the double layer row cover? Did you remove so layers the, at the same time? So the question is, did I remove the the two the dual system at the same time? And the answer is yes. We removed everything at the exact same time. The question was asked about the black plastic, and yes, the plastic mulch was for uh, weed control. Is there any other questions? No. Yeah. Have you ever seen any time that it was actually crossed in, on the single that was actually crossed inside the four The answer to that question is yes. In 2012, which I didn't show in this specific uh, <coughs> presentation, is yes. So let's say the air temperature outside was higher than the temperature inside the tunnels. And we're still investigating why that was. And that's why I didn't show all my 2012 data, because I didn't have an answer for that yet. So. Because I had that happen where right? there was water frozen on the inside the plastic, but the outside plants right. and stuff survived. And on, on that note, the other thing is um, the dual layer system seemed to, to perf wasn't as cold so the dual layer system seemed to help with that, but the temperature outside was still cooler than it was inside. I have a partial explanation for that. You, know, you had a temperature increase without sun. That is, we had an overcast day, and it was 40 degrees warmer than the previous day. That would do it, because you wouldn't have the solar game. This, this was like at night, you have more, right? More warm stuff at night, like yeah. The car frost, the inside of the car, we yeah, we sometimes have that happen. It's frosty when we go to bed and, and 50 degrees when we wake up. Yeah. Sometimes it's frosty inside the tunnel. And no solar game, yeah. Yeah. Related to that, I think that I often talk about before. I had the same issue in my um, um, row cover. It's a big one, it's not a small one. But it's because the guy explained to me is that your row house keep the moisture for the night. So it would be two to three degrees colder at night. Attention, please. Workshop session two is now ending. And today's okay. workshop. As I said, I've gotten a couple different explanations, and I haven't really Farmers figured out which one. Farmers and leaders protecting nature and creating social change with organic farmer activists.